So my next interview, uh, looking at year three for House of Keys, is with Jim Watson, of course the speaker and member for Russian. And we come to see you in your very nice position pad here. Very nice. Um, let's look back, first of all, which we've been doing over the last year. Um, how's it been? What have you been up to? What a year. Um, mm. Everything from abortion to zip trip and everything in between, haven't we? It's yeah. been, a, been a roller coaster. Has, has it been a, a, a good year for getting legislation through and you know, what do you think of that sort of side of things? It's, uh, it's, I think we've got a, a bigger year ahead in terms of legislation than we have had. Um, we've had some pretty big ticket items over the last year though, haven't we? Mm. Um, we've had um, the, the second PAC report blowing the lid on Nobles Hospital. Um, and sh showing the, the sort of management that we've had there, that's led to the... You've been keen on that one, haven't you? It's been really, really important. I mean, it's always been a taboo. It's been too big to handle. And so when the PAC got its teeth into it, it was really important that we did a proper thorough job on it. So it took two years to get these reports lined up, but we've demonstrated that actually Nobles Hospital was not value for money. And so we've had to completely change the way that we've worked at it. I'm really pleased that government has picked up the ball and run with this, with Sir Jonathan Michael's report, and, and we're going to change how it works. Do you think they'll but, get through? I mean, you know, everyone said yes to those changes, but yeah. it's still got to be implemented, haven't they? So. Well, there is no plan B. I mean, we've no. seen what, what plan A looked like, and we, you know, we identified in our report um, recommendations and, and issues in there that would save um, Nobles Hospital £10 million a year plus. So it, it was just not a sustainable solution. How did it get to that situation? Or was that done the story for another day? That's a, a long story, but uh, yeah. uh, and you know, you look at the hundreds of pages of work that we put into that. You could read read through it and find out everything from sort of uh, consultants' contracts, but even through sort of the culture of copy, cut, and paste. Um, and we had everything, didn't we? Oh, you know what? Yeah. What did you think when you saw that? I couldn't believe it. I mean, I've still got, I'm keeping it for the grandchildren, the, the version of the, the Wigan one and the Isle of Man one with the highlights of the exact word for word copying. Did anyone actually take the cop for that? Well, the deputy chief executive has left the building. And, and that's where we're at on that one. I mean, there's been another change, hasn't it, in, in personnel in, mm -hmm. in the last few weeks as more people, someone's coming in who's not actually gonna live here. What do you think to that one? Um, uh, the important thing is whether the job gets done. Yeah. And I don't think we should be too prescriptive, you know, as long as they're, they're, they're paying their tax and all the rest of it. You asked that, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> well, it's important, yeah. um, but it's about getting the job done. Um, and whilst the, it's always gonna be a bit unusual because you want to make sure you're building up the personal relationships, so that I think there'll be a more intensive periods at the start, but ultimately, th this is all about delivery, and public service should be all about delivery, um, and it shouldn't be up to politicians to, to micromanage how that's done. What else you had your finger on over the last year to keep make sure that it's been done? That can sound quite bad, that. But, you know, what, what have you been keeping an eye on? Let's try that one. Yeah. <laughs> <It's better. laughs> well, as I say, we've been far from busy. Um, mm. Certainly, I've been chairing the Select Committee on Poverty, and we've laid our first report there as well, um, actually sort of recommending a definition of poverty to government. That'll be debated in what, December. Manx poverty? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's almost like people don't think it exists. But our, our estimate is it could be up to 20% of people on the Isle of Man um, on some of the figures that we've been looking at. So trying to get a, an idea. 20%? Um, up to, yeah. 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 Um, if you look at the number of people on income-related benefits, for example, as one proxy. Um, but we've, we've come up with this definition based on the work of the Social Metrics Commission. We said this is the definition that we think government should adopt. And if it does that, it will have to run the numbers and see for itself how many people meet that definition of poverty. We've trundled on for far too long with outer definition of poverty. And of course, then how do you really know how many people it affects and what the impact of that is? So we, we, if we get this definition in in December, then the next step is a lot of thematic reports about some of the issues around disability, around housing, around benefits, to make sure that actually we're really addressing the core problems and mm. not just sort of tinkering around the edges. So there's like a subculture on the old band which many people wouldn't appreciate it then. And yet it's there. I mean, we hear about sofa surfing and that sort of thing. Yes. There's no homelessness as such, but then again, there are places we don't, for we that. We don't have many people on the streets, no. but we're certainly getting stories about people living in cars, moving from uh, friend's house to friend's house, yeah. you know. Uh, and that's, that's one side of it. Um, and also the, the sheer quality of the housing that some people are living in. Um, around this island is shameful and we should we should be ashamed of that so again um, long overdue um, bringing back the, the landlord tenant bill that mm. failed in the last house but hopefully we'll, we'll come have back here again is it? the DOI has given a commitment that that will come back to make sure that we have minimum housing standards on the Isle of Man when I was Home Affairs Minister we went I went round um, with the police to um, you know knock on doors and do welfare checks and things like that we had, uh, I was going into bed sits without skirting boards with one bathroom between several different uh, flats 
and, and you were a damp coming down walls and you think this is not acceptable yeah. in the Isle of Man in the 21st century this was something that you would expect to see in Victorian Britain sure but it all failed last time so why do you think it's got a, got a better chance this time of well I think through? there's far more awareness of the subject I think then c- certainly in terms of the work that the Poverty Committee has done and, and others have done as well. Who's going to through you? you no, this it? will be the Department of Infrastructure's bill and they've oh, given a commitment. A yeah, and, and so I would really hope that it gets uh, far stronger support this time. Um, before we look ahead, I, I, you know, how have you found the last year still doing this thing that, you know, obviously in, in Keys you are in charge, then of course in Timwall you actually do get your chance to, to, to ask. Yeah. And you do give government, I, I, I would fair say, a, a fair run for their money. Is yeah. it still... Hard when you have these two. Well, you've got to remember being, being Speaker of the House of Keys and wearing the wig and the gown, mm. and it's a tiny proportion of, of the job that I do. Um, it, it's really um, compared to all the, all the work that isn't seen, the constituency work, the um, uh, certainly the work on legislation, and I've been in sort of correspondence and the, some of the piles of paper you can see at the far end of my desk. That, that they're the, the work that have been doing scrutinising legislation. It's not sexy, it's not eye-catching, it's not a great news story, but when you've got bills the size of the Sexual Offences Bill, the Domestic Violence Bill, that, that have some of their genesis back in the Home Affairs Department when, when I was there, you keep an interest in these things. And, and it's 200 pages of legislation with really big social uh, implications. So making sure that that's right. Of course, I can't have my say in the House of Keys, mm. so I've got to do it all um, behind the scenes and also... Um, uh, well in advance of the debates in the House. How do you, th- how do you think, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't cover House of Keys, but you know, Tim will, I, I go once a month. Mm-hmm. The standard debates, uh, some have been pretty bad recently. Um, how, do you, how do you view We've that? We've had some intemperate debates, but, but yeah. check that against the, I mean, I, this is my, my third House of Keys I've been involved in. Um, and I, I think overall the members really have taken on board the principles that I've been uh, hammering home about playing the ball and not the person. So we have had some intemperate discussions, but actually there have been real heartfelt debates on policy. Mm-hmm. They haven't been personal attacks, and, and that I think is, is welcome. That, that's a great move on from some of the things we had um, in the old days, he says, so, as someone who's not even 40 yet. But, um, yeah. but, but you're one of the youngest men and, and still have that, do you? When you went into politics? The I, was the, I was the youngest when I went in. Yeah. Um, I think I'm the fourth or fifth now. I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> I, can put, I think the young farmers can no longer portray me in short trousers and a school cap. I think that, that those days have gone. That's now, hurting you, isn't it? <laughs>